you go. Hello, I'm Paul Hartnell. This is my studio. Fantastic. Whoa. Yeah, it's a bit of a mess at the moment. I'm not kind of currently in here working, so it's kind of yeah, a bit of a mess on the around the floor. But you know, this, this. and this is mainly kind of a writing yeah. environment. Right. Well, this is this is where I, I pretty much do everything. You know, okay. sort of write, record. You know, yeah. I mean, my computer's not there at the minute, but um, yeah, this is this is it. Fantastic. I've kind of just recently tried to set up as much as I could because I've got, you know, you can see I've got a lot of stuff and yeah. a lot of it was sort of hanging around the edges, but I kind of thought I'd sort of use it or lose it. I, I kind of want to find out what I'm actually using because right. actually, fun as it looks, it can be a bit daunting having this much gear because you come in and you end up scratching the surface of, you know, lots of synths rather than really honing down and right. using one or two things. So I might... I'm kind of got it all up and running, trying it all out, and then I'm going to probably just chuck a load of it right. somewhere else, out of sight, and then stick with two or three okay. items for the next project. I see. Then yeah. swap them for some more, know, you know, that I kind of thing. That, I think that, 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 that it's, it's very much in human nature. If there's too much choice, it just becomes, oh, yeah. choice becomes overwhelming. And I think that I always find, especially in this day and age, where you've got terabytes of sounds and this, that, and the other, is that... If you actually, uh, if you starve yourself of resources, you become more resourceful in other methods. Oh, you know, absolutely. Production, composition, that, that kind of thing. Yeah, there's nothing. I, I think, you know, I was listening to loads of old four-track tapes that I did, and, you know, the things that I got out of the two or three synths that I had back then was incredible. You know, you listen to it and think, oh, that, that's, okay, that's quite inventive, yeah. what, you've, what you've done there, because you had to. Yeah. And um, yeah, I kind of want to get back to that. They say it's creating attention, isn't it? I remember talking to Martin Ware about where did that music come from? He said, well, we had this kit and we wanted to try and make some George Clinton sounding stuff. And it's like, uh, yeah, it, yeah. there's a tension there because they were restricted. So yeah, so no, right. definitely good to, to restrict yourself. Like when, when I was moving in here, um, I took my studio down, came here, it wasn't quite ready, so I had to leave everything in storage and I took like two or three items back and had like a brilliant kind of six week run with just two or three things and it made me really did make me think mm, right you need to do that but I can't I just can't help myself I just keep buying things <laughs> so you've got some amazing looking um, modular stuff yeah so so what's this big I'm not so familiar with modular since since so um, these are Macbeth M5Ns which right. are I, I mean they don't make them anymore but they're, they're, they're relatively new oh right um, so Ken Macbeth a sort of Scottish Synth manufacturer, or the Scottish synth manufacturer. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any others. No. Um, you know, this was one of his earlier things, you know, and he declared it, you know, as a performance synth. It doesn't have to be this big. Right. But he felt he wanted to build something that just felt robust and, and large. And actually, um, when we reformed Orbital a few years back for for the sort of touring of that, I took one of these out. Really learned. I'd, I'd had it for a bit, but I really learned it on the road, you know, because obviously it's no preset. So yeah. every track I was having to reset and remake wow. the sound up as you go along, and um, you know, really learned the sort of the nuances of, of what it does. And do you have two because you took it on the road as a backup? Uh, or well, what? actually, what what happened? One of them doesn't really work okay. um, because it's kind of there for for spares, and it, it you can sometimes get a bit of a sound out of it, but. Um, it, yeah, because basically we, we got rained on once at a festival. This huge yeah. storm came over. Our gear was at the front of the stage, ready to go. 20 minutes till stage time. And then this almighty storm hit and everybody had to clear the stage because the whole stage was going like that. And everything got buckets of water in it. Sun's in. Mark um, that two. That must have been heartbreaking. Yeah, I mean, that's one of 11. You know, no. there's only 11 of those. And it got, you know, we're tipping pints of water out of them. And, oh, no. Um, I know, it was, it was mad. We managed to get most of it working again the next day, but the Macbeth didn't didn't, didn't really it. come back. So that's why I've got two. I had to buy Ken's personal one off him. He was willing to let it go. <laughs> Brilliant. And I see you've got a, a really big System 100. Yeah. I bought this years ago from uh, the Turnkey when they sort of used to deal in second-hand synths for a little bit. Oh, yeah. I, bought, we, I bought this and this back then. Um, and they, they, you know, they were not so much this actually. I didn't get into this so much back then. I, we, we did use it for bits of snivelization and insides, but that really became a, a favourite. I've actually been using this more recently. Okay. It's got a real lovely kind of vintagey sound, especially since I've got this, the the mixer with the 
spring reverb oh, yeah. in it, which is just a beautiful. They, there's, that's a marriage made in heaven, isn't it? The, mm. the, the springs with these that those this kind of sounding synths. It yeah. seems to work. Yeah, so really it's well. got that beautiful sort of proper vintage. I, I'm assuming it's kind of in line with something like an the the, the um, System 700, is it? The, you know, the big. Yeah, the big. It's big. that kind of you know maybe Jupiter fours. I don't know. I've never mm. really heard them. I've played a little bit with floods. 700. I've got a, I've but got a Jupiter 4, it's lo mm. lovely for the kit. Yeah. yeah. And it has a very kind of modular sound to it, I think. Yeah. It's, it's probably the same guts, really, isn't it? Well, that's what I'm thinking. It's very different to that. Similar ish, but it's not, they, you know, they do change these things. I mean, that sounds more like a modular 101, you know, right. which is fa okay. fantastic. This is the best envelopes I know. And that's the System 100M. M, okay, yeah. Mm. And I see you've got a Putney there as well. Yep. That, I mean, that's, that's, I, I bought that off of, um, Robin, the last man sort of standing at EMS. Oh, it's a good neck, isn't it? Yeah, well, he this was his one, and I put myself down to try and get one of the briefcases, and he sort of sent me an email saying, "Look, you, you're not going to get one. They're, they're not. You know, we've run out of parts. But right. if you want, you can buy my personal Putney." Wow. And um, he said, you know, he said he just had it all re-screen printed. All this is has been done, it's and beautiful. you know, new knobs, but the insides are all the the original. Um, and that's that's an amazing piece of kit. It's actually it's it's really good with the speaker because it's a trick that sort of Flood taught me to mic up the speaker. Right, it's a really good good thing. Um, and it's the most amazing kind of like preamp for bass. You put plug your bass guitar in it and play it through that. It just, wow. just sounds like you get that real kind of um, oh, massive attack kind of mezzanine kind of throbbing dirty bass wow. sound. It's it's lovely actually. It's a great, it's a great effects unit as well as a synth. I mean, trying to get it in tune is like yes. herding cats, but when you do, it's brilliant. It was one of these knobs goes around twenty four times or something. These, right? these ones, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got a really fine sort of tuning yeah. element that, it, but the way it beats together is just, it's this magical. It's really strange, but it's got, it's so old. It's it kind of, to me, sounds more like rock and roll, like sixties sort of gotcha. sounding it's got so vintage sounding it sounds like joe meek and things like right, that right you know, the spring in it's um beautiful oh, yeah no, i love that brilliant stuff mm. and what are your kind of front runners over here i see you've got a jupiter 8 yep. someone uh, i was with recently just described jupiter 8 as the, like the fender strat of synths <laughs> yeah yeah no it's, it's lovely i mean i've always had a jupiter 6 which normally sits up there right. but i've got it at home at the minute and I tried out an eight. I just said, oh, I'm not going to buy that. I've got a six. And I tried it out and went, oh, yeah, hello. <laughs> it's just Do you so like much. the six as well? Yeah, I love the six, yeah. but it's it's definitely like um, kind of more fuzzy and, and not cheaper. It's de definitely fuzzy around the edge and more plasticky compared to that. Yeah. That's just the sort of the best of all possible Roland sounds in one in one box, I think. Right. It, you know, because you can make it sound like all of these guys over here, but then when it's you know polyphonic and you split the um the channel so that you've got the same sound on left and right and you know, it's just beautiful Excellent. although i would say if i had to keep only one of those two i'd keep that the right. time expander is, is i've had that for so long as well and i know that inside out but it can still uh, even though i know it inside out it can still surprise me and it still comes up with things that i wouldn't yeah, right. you know wouldn't dream of but, it, but it's just got such a beautiful Sort of creamy sound. Brilliant. Yeah, I like that. That it's funny because they're not that uh, they're not that expensive really for what they are. Mm -hmm. I think it's a bit of a sleeper. Right. I so, should keep my eyes out. For yeah, that. worth getting hold of one if you can. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Yeah. And what are these treats? Um, so did so did did Sunsin make it through the rain? Yes, it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it did. That's really it did. But you know. It, while I was trying to program as many synths as I could in software for the live set to cover the ones that were dead, my brother was pretty much standing there. It was boiling hot at the festival the next day. He was standing there with all the guts of all the synths open with hair dryers trying to blow dry oh everything. God. Bless him. But uh, <laughs> that was that was a crazy day. But that no, that works. And that was um, he he um, he made ten of these, and I kind of just realised I just missed it, so I rung him up and said. Oh, Please, you've got to tell me there's one more. He said, oh, okay, for you, I'll make one more. And um, yeah, so that's my 11th Sun Sin. Brilliant. But that's, that's got lots of hidden depths. I haven't even scratched the surface for that, but that's a, that's a beautiful sounding, you know, discreet 
um, you know, it's got a card for each voice, so oh, it's a I bit see. like the the Jupiter Eight in that. It's you know, it's, it's got a really kind of rich analog sound. It's got this crazy kind of digital element as well, which you know you can really add add okay. to it with that. Yeah, it's yeah, good. And are you enjoying the Tempest? I am. Again, that's another one. It's got so many hidden depths. It, the thing that's, that's, that's I actually really enjoy about this, and I took it live. Um, it's actual performance things. The sort of sense, the, the the roll function on it is so beautiful. It's got such a lovely feel to it. Right. It's the best drum machine I've had for performance-wise. Um, the sound of it, I'm still kind of trying to get my head around because it's actually like a six-voice polyevolver. Right. Really, okay. there are there are slight differences, but not many. You yeah. know, it's it's got the same. You know, because actually, what I did, I the sounds I was using on my polyevolve when I went live, instead of taking both of them, I programmed them into here and got them, you know, okay. pretty much nailed. Um, so it's actually a very good six voice polyphonic synth as well as a drum machine. Now it's quite a, it's quite a wild creature. This really, there's a Excellent. lot. There's a, there, there's years and years of exploration, which is, comes back to me saying, I've got too much gear. Because, as you can hear, I keep talking about this and this and not having fully explored them. Whereas the kit that I had when I was younger, when yeah. I didn't have much, I know inside out. And that's the thing. I need to kind of hide away all my old you. stuff yeah. and just keep that and that out. And then I will fully learn them, you know. Yeah. Gotcha. And that's, that's lovely, actually. I, I, I enjoy this because I've got my 2600, which I, I love. Mm -hmm. And I this is funny because I can hear the 2600 in it but it's because it's got a different way of operating it just comes out slightly differently gotcha. it's yeah it's it's a funny one but it's got that kind of arp tight bottom end that if you do real subby basses they still seem to poke through gotcha gotcha um, which is yeah that's a lovely thing actually and how's everything rooted is it all just into a big big patch bay or? yep it's all just going into a patch bay i've got sort of gig boxes around the room right gotcha um, you know, so oh, I can I see, see yeah. like those kind of things. Gotcha. You see, you can just plug into that, and then it goes into that desk. Right. And hey, what presto. And what's your what's your door? Is it Logic or? Um, I'm bilingual with Logic and Ableton. Ableton. Oh, Ableton, right. Yeah, I got into Ableton. I, I, I've always been from C Lab Creator. I've always been Logic. The black screen. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I looked. I saw. I saw the tiny little screen. But um, yeah, C Lab Creator right through to Logic, and then when Ableton came out, I thought it was looked fantastic, and I got it. And again, didn't really learn it until I was doing a film score, and I just wanted, you know, the director said, "Oh, do some experiments," and I just thought, "Okay, I'm going to use this chance to sure. get to know Ableton," and did a lot of the film score in Ableton to learn it. And then when I went out live again. Um, instead of using the MMT8s, which I, I really didn't want to be using again, yeah. you know, uh, much as they were great through most of my career, the, the rate at which they crash is just yeah. frightening um, compared to a laptop anyway. Yeah. But so I went Ableton for playing live, but controlling it from lemurs. Um, okay. So I, again, I learned Ableton through doing this film and through playing live. And um, I kind of migrated to it. I like it. It's kind of, Logic's great for, for it's so open ended. You can do what you like and make it work for you how you want it. But Ableton's got this kind of slightly cheeky feel to it or something. It, it's very unashamedly electronic music based. It, it, right. it does some brilliant things. The way it treats audio is fantastic. Yeah. Much better than Logic for, for my yeah. tastes. Fantastic. Well, thanks for your time. Yeah, no worries. It's been a real pleasure having a look around. Oh, look, Casio, my first CZ1000. Yeah, they're great, aren't they, yeah. the, the, those? I know, I had to, I, I borrowed, used to, I, I used to have a, um, what was the really little one? CZ1001. CZ 101, yeah. But I borrowed one of those off someone for years, uh, you know, when yeah. I was in a band, he took it back, and I always missed it for, for years, I missed it, and then I bought that for 40 pounds, Brilliant. you know. Amazing. But you can see it's got a little update on it, I've got a knob put on it, <laughs> because the, you know, like, when you have to program things with value, Yes. And it's like oh, 127 no. push buttons. Yeah. This one's got a little knob so you can uh, bypass all of that. Nice Just in time for that really lovely software version to come out, which <laughs> nails it so much that it's like, oh, God. You know. Brilliant stuff. So, well, thanks again, Paul. Yeah, no worries. Fantastic. That's great.